In this video, I'm going to teach you how you can make those cool framework code components that others are literally selling for hundreds of dollars. The cool thing is that I was able to come up with a process that lets you create these components and overrides without actually knowing how to code. And yeah, I'm basically giving this to you for completely free. Well, if you want to pay me, you can always subscribe or like this video. But other than that, it's truly free. So my name is Nandi. This is Freeman University and let's get started. So I'm going to break this video up into three sections. In the first section, I'm going to talk about what is a code component or a code override in Framer. Then in the second section, we're going to use my special process to create a code component. And then in the third section, we're going to create a code override with the same process. So now, Let's jump into the first section and let's talk about what is a Framer code component or a code override. So as you might already know, Framer is a no-code website builder where you can literally draw frames like this and then add text layers and then just press publish in the top right corner and you have a live website. And this is a no-code tool. Uh, you can add different effects, different styles to these elements without writing any code. However, there are some limitations. So, you know, sometimes you come across different things that might not be possible to make in Framer natively. And that's where code components and code overrides come in, because Framer has these things. And the great thing about this is that if you come to a limitation, you might be able to overcome that limitation because we have code components and overrides. So just to show you an example, I have uh, this assets panel here and I have an elapsed time component. As you can see, this is the code that is basically making up this component and I can just drag and drop it here to the canvas. And as you can see, it has some properties on the right panel. Here we have a date property and if I say, for example, 2024 and May 20th, you're going to see that we see 10 days ago. So we basically type in a date and this component will give us how many days ago that day was. So this is an example for a code component that you wouldn't be able to create natively in Framer with no code, but you can still create it if you know how to write this code. But of course we don't know how to write this code. I I don't know how to write it. My, you might be you know able to write this code, but I'm not a coder, so I have no idea how this works, but with the new process that I'm going to show you, you're going to be able to create these really easily. So now let's go into the second section of this video where I'm going to be talking about how we can use that special process to create a code component. So here I am, and you can see that we have ChatGPT here. I think you can already notice what is going on here. We're going to use AI. When we are using AI, the really important thing is to have a great prompt because we have to teach ChatGPT how we can write code components and overrides in Framer because it is a really, really special aspect of coding that ChatGPT might not know. So that's why I created this little guide, which is not so little, as you can see, it's like 17 pages in, uh, in Google Docs. So it's quite a few lines here, but it is a prompt. So we, what we can do here is we can just simply select this whole thing and then we can just copy this. So let's do that. Let's copy this. And I'm going to go here to ChatGPT. But before I paste it into ChatGPT, I want to show you something. If you are on a paid plan in ChatGPT, so you have this plus plan, then you don't have to use this prompt. You can just go to custom GPTs and search for this Framer GPT. And you can just message this GPT and you're going to be able to create the code components and overrides with this. And you don't have to train it with my special prompt. So if you have paid plan, go ahead and use this. If you don't have the paid plan, you can use my special process that I created for you because I know that some of you guys might not be able to afford the plus plan in ChatGPT. So that's why I'm going to show you now the special process. So let's paste in this special prompt and let's send this. 
So what we are doing here is we are basically teaching ChatGPT how he can or she, I'm not sure, can write these code overrides and components. As you can see, it now says, what should we create? So now I'm going to give this GPT a prompt. So I already have this right here, so I'm going to just paste it in. So we are going to be creating a countdown. Let me just paste it in here. So as you can see, I want to create a code component for a countdown timer that has property controls like a text field where I can input the date, sorry, the end date of the countdown in this format. And uh, we need ex extended font controls and font color property toggles to show and hide day, hours, minutes or seconds individually. And the text field for an end message that is displayed when the countdown ends. And I include this part here, which is also really important to make sure to remember to implement all knowledge that you've been given in my first message. This is important because, you know, ChatGPT sometimes forgets what we said in the previous message. So it is important to mention it here. So as you can see, I'm really, really, uh, you know, detailed here. I want to make sure that I'm giving every detail really clearly to ChatGPT because that's how I can make sure that it is going to know what I want to create. And that's how it's going to, you know, output something that is actually usable. So now let's send this message and let's see what we get. So as you can see, <clears throat> we start getting this little uh, component and um, we can wait you know, a couple of seconds. It's quite fast, but we still have to wait a couple of seconds to, to have the full thing. And we can paste it into Framer and we can see if it is actually working because usually it doesn't. So <laughs> it is um, usually doesn't work at the first try. You sometimes have to try a couple of times, go back and forth with uh, ChatGPT and then you're going to get it working. But how do you create a code component to Framer? You just go to the assets panel on the left and then click this plus button next to code. A new component will be called countdown. Let's create that. As you can see, we have automatically generated code here. We can delete that and then paste in our code. So I pasted this in and then let's see if I can drag and drop this to the canvas. Let me just drag and drop and change the color. And yeah, as you can see, it works nicely. We have a countdown. We can uh, type in a end date. So let's say it's going to be June. And yeah, it's, it's working really nicely. Let's see if we can change the font. Okay, we can actually change the font as well. So it is working really nicely. We can show and hide days, hours, minutes. Pretty nice. Let's see if the time's up message works if the countdown uh, ends. So what's the date today? It's uh, 31st. Now we're just going to wait 30 seconds here. So as you can see, we have five seconds left, four, three, two, one. And let's see if we see the text message. Yes, time's up. And we can also customize this text here. So something can be written here. Amazing, really great. Let's get, get it back to time's up. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you that, okay, now we have this countdown timer. But what if I want to customize this further? So what if I want to have a different style for this or a different layout? How I can do that? Well, what you have to do is you have to tell ChatGPT what you want. So let's say we want um, these little days, hours, minutes and seconds below the numbers and right next to each other. So let's tell ChatGPT this little idea. Let's tell GPT that we have a new idea. But first, let's tell him that it works. Thanks. I have a new idea. Can you make it so that we have the labels, days, hours, minutes, seconds below the numbers? aligned vertically to the center with the numbers forming four columns distanced 
equally controlled with a gap property make also another text property that controls the labels labels font properties and color as well yeah i think that's it for now let's see what we get now so as you can see gpt is working really hard we just have to come up with nice and really easy to understand and detailed uh, prompts and then we get back something that we can use in our website which is i think it's pretty amazing so now let's copy this code over to framer so i'm going to go inside of this code component and replace this previous code that we had and let's see what do we have right now we have a different uh, label color now so we can we can change this here and then we have the gap that works as well we can change the label font to a different font too so that's also perfect so i think it looks really nice for example if i want to have different labels so maybe i want to have lowercase for each of them i can just go to the code and i can probably change that uh, because it, it shouldn't be too hard to find okay so here we have days we can just replace these letters minutes is gonna be lowercase as well and then seconds is gonna be lowercase as well so now we have this looks really nice and we can customize this so let's have 24 gap we can have maybe a little bit more space here we can also have a different color for the label maybe this gray then for the font we can have 28 for the numbers it can be semi bold but we can also change it to any other font here it's going to work perfectly and as you can see it just works really well and we created a code component in framer and we basically cannot write code but we still we were able to do this so that just shows how powerful ai is if you can use it the right way so yeah if you run into any issues you can just go back to chat gpt and say that hey i had this error and it's gonna fix it for you so just just look at chat gpt as your developer friend that helps you creating these code components and overrides in framer so yeah this is the countdown timer now let's move on to the third section of this video and let's create a little code override as well. So usually what I do is I use code overrides if I just want to add some really simple style, for example, to an element that is, is not available in Framer natively. So for example, a really common thing that we use code overrides for is when we have some text here. So let's, uh, let's write something here. Let's write something here as a title so when we have some text here like this let's have it on fit content height you can see that when for example let's say that this text can only be 360 pixel in width because this is the width of our website breakpoint maybe it's on the mobile and as you can see this text is not really balanced right here uh the way it would be balanced is by probably breaking it like maybe like this this is the most balance that we can do but as you can see it is not balanced right here well in css we have a property for this which is called text wrap and it is set to balance and it just does the job and in framer it could be you know a simple property here maybe here in text you could just add it but it is not here i'm pretty sure that they're gonna add it really soon because it's a simple feature but now it is not in framer so that's when you can just go to your chat gpt and just ask it to write a code of words for you so let's do that i'm gonna go to chat gpt and i'm gonna say hey i want to create an override that I can apply to a text layer in Framer so that it gets text wrap 
set to balance so the text looks nice and balanced make sure to not overwrite any previous styles of the text layer and keep all styling while adding this new property to it make sure to remember all the information about creating code overrides in framer that you've been given in the first message let's see what we have so as you can see ChatGPT wrote this little code right for us that we can just copy and test it in framer so i'm going to go to assets down to code and then click this plus button create a new override which is called balance and then just replace the code with the code that we have from ChatGPT, and now the code override is created now we can select our text layer and then apply the code override on the right panel file is balanced and the override is with balanced text wrap so now as you can see it is not balanced uh the last word here is here and let's see what we see in preview so if i click this little button here or press command and p we go into preview mode and now as you can see here it is perfectly balanced because as you can see the here is now wrapped into the next line so the text looks much nicer um if we have more extreme here so let's say this is what we would have normally then this is what we are going to have on the live website so this is just an example for a code override but you can do basically anything you just have to make sure to have a great cooperation with your chat gpt we can also create another code override just for fun so let's say we have like a little frame here that has like a blue color and what if i want to add just a fun little touch to this so each time this frame is being clicked it gets a new random color so what i can do is again i can go to chat gpt let's start a new conversation start with our little prompt here and then tell gpt this new idea i want to create a code override that i can apply to an existing element in framer this override should add this functionality to the element each time it's clicked it should get a new fill color a random one make sure to remember the code override rules from my first message and let's see what we get so as you can see already started generating the code and it was pretty quick so we can just create a new code override so assets click this plus button and call this random color we can remove this and paste in our code save the file with command and s and then apply it to this little frame so code override random color and change fill color so i'm going to click this little frame and as you can see for some reason it doesn't do the job so we can take a look at this code you know it seems like it is great so it should be it should be doing it correctly but for some reason it is not doing the job so what we can do is in this case we can go back to ChatGPT and say that hey it is not really working maybe try a different method for this because this code override doesn't work on the element it is applied to it but when clicked it doesn't change color let's see that new code override copy code paste it in save the file and let's see if it works as you can see here in the code, it says, assuming your elements fail color properties named fail color, 
and assuming ID is a unique identifier for the element. But these are not really happening because it's not called field color and we don't have a unique ID for the element. So what we have to probably tell ChatGPT here is that this element has a background color and that's what it has to change. And it doesn't have to get the element by its ID because this code override is applied to that specific element. So it should be able to get all of those informations. So let's type this in. The elements fill color property is not named fill color. It is a background color CSS property. And it also doesn't have ID. You need to be able to target this element easily because we are directly applying this code override to the element. So now we get a new one and let's try this. I'm going to save the file with the new code and let's apply this new override. So now if we click this little rectangle, it works perfectly. So I just want to show you another example to see that sometimes you have to, you know, play around with this a little bit and just go back and forth to ChatGPT because sometimes it just doesn't know what you want. And of course, if you have the paid plan, you can use Framer GPT, which is much better. But here we can just, you know, use so much training data. So you can see that this little prompt here is the prompt that we train our GPT with. But, you know, we cannot give it many, many examples of code overrides or things like that, that it could basically train itself on. And that's why it might be a little bit harder to do this. But when I started out, when I started from university, I started creating code overrides and code components the exact same way. And yeah, it might take some time, but at the end of the day, I think it's pretty fun to play around with AI and create things that you wouldn't be able to do otherwise. So yeah, I think it's pretty fun. So yeah, that was this little video. I hope that it was helpful. Please let me know in the comments if you have any questions or anything. I also have a website called framer.university where I have a bunch of cool remixes, components, lessons, tutorials, just like this, and it is all free. So yeah, if you are learning Framer, that website will probably help you a lot. Make sure to like this video and subscribe for more, and I'm gonna see you in the next one.